I'm Carsten Vogt. I'm a professor of computer science at Cologne University of Applied Sciences in Germany. And in this unit, I will speak about the user interface thread in Android and the class async task to program background threads. What you will learn in this lesson is that you will understand the usage of background threads to handle events and how to program these background threads with the Android class async task, especially how this class can cooperate between UI thread and background thread. This unit is based on a former unit called events and the user interface thread in Android where we saw that there's a fundamental program when using only one single user interface thread. What is this problem? The problem is that event handling must not block the user interface thread. It must not block the main thread. Otherwise, the software will react too late, the GUI might freeze, and you might get an application not responding error. The solution to solve this problem is to handle long events not by the main thread itself, but by dedicated background threads. What are the steps to use such a background thread? First step is that the user interface thread, the main thread, detects an event. And in reaction to this event, the main thread starts a background thread which has to handle this event. The main thread transfers parameters to this background thread and afterwards immediately continues with its work. The background thread handles the event in parallel concurrently to the main thread. While executing its operations, the background thread can inform the main thread about its progress. It can do this multiple times and finally the background thread will return its results, it will send them to the main thread or will publish them directly on the graphical user interface. In Android there's a special program doing this. In Android the prob problem is that threads other than the UI thread cannot access the graphical user interface directly. The reason for this is that access to user interface elements is not thread safe, that means if multiple threads access the user interface, they may disturb each other. So, the graphical user interface can be only accessed by the user interface thread. Other threads must send their results to the user interface thread and in turn the user interface thread will publish the results on the interface. And for this reason, programming can get quite complicated. But in Android, there is a helper class, async task, which makes things easier. The purpose of async tasks is to perform operations concurrently at the same time as the UI thread by using background threads. They can cooperate closely with the user interface thread. They take parameters from the user interface thread. They inform it about their progress and they return the results to the UI thread. You can program such async tasks by using this class async task, a helper class to make programming background threads easier. This class is characteristic, char characterized by having generic types for the parameters to the operation for progress information and results and it provides methods for the individual execution steps. This is the definition of the class async task. You see first that this class is abstract, so you must write a subclass to use it. There is an abstract method called do in background, which defines the event handling operation and which you as the programmer have to program. Second, we have three type parameters. The class is generic and therefore has type parameters. The first one is called params, which is the type for the parameters for the operation. Second is called progress, which is the type for the values describing the progress of the operation. And the third is called result, which is the type of the result of the operation. We will see an example for this in the following 
false. Consider, for example, this class myAsyncTask, which is a subclass of AsyncTask. It defines a procedure, a method, do in background, which takes some long parameters and return a Boolean value and defines some code for handling an event. These two types, long and Boolean, occur in the parameter list of the class myAsyncTask. Long is the parameter type for the operation, Boolean is the return type of the operation. The third type in the middle, double, is the type by which the background thread will inform the UI thread about its progress. For example, in this case, there will be double values, for example, telling how much percent of the processing time have elapsed so far. The most important methods of async tasks task are the following. The execute method is called by the user interface thread to start the execution. It takes parameters of the type params. Do in background with the same parameter type defines the operation of the background thread. It is an abstract method and therefore must be overridden. On pre-execute is executed by the user interface thread before do in background begins. There are other methods, for example, publish progress, which is called by the background threads to inform about its progress. If it is called by the background thread on progress update, another method is executed by the user interface as, an, as a reaction to that. And finally, we have the on post execute method, which is executed by the user interface thread after do in background the event handling procedure of the background thread has returned. In this diagram, you see the sequence of steps. First, the user interface thread creates an async task object and calls execute on this object. The parameters that are transferred to this call are sent to the background thread to its do in background operation. Before that, on pre-execute is executed by the user interface thread. The background thread executes do in background completely concurrently to the user interface thread and by doing this possibly calls once or multiple times publish progress informing the user interface thread about the progress which in turn executes on progress update. Finally, do in background ends returns a value of type result. This triggers the execution of post ex on post execute, which is in turn executed by the user interface thread to take the results of the background thread. An example based on the my async task class we saw before. First, the user interface thread creates a my async task object and calls the execute method on this object. You don't need this to program this execute method. It is there by itself. Afterwards, the user at uh, the background thread will execute do in background. For example, a long background operation to see if the parameter is a prime number. And finally, it will return a corresponding Boolean value. This triggers in turn the execution of the post on post execute method, method by the UI thread. For example, as you can see here in this case, this on post execute will take the return value of the background thread, will check whether it is true or it is false, and then publishes a corresponding string, is a prime number, is no prime number, on the user interface by writing it in some edit text field. What have we learned in this lesson? We have learned, we have remembered that long event handling should be done by background threads, not by the main thread itself. The problem in Android is that background threads cannot access the graphical user interface directly. And therefore, pre programming might get complicated. However, there is a helper class, async task, which makes, which makes programming easier 
because it provides types and methods for the cooperation between the UI threads and background threads. Thank you for your attention.